I wasn't going to review this pair of headphones because it's just another pair of headphones, isn't it? Only it really, really isn't. I get sent a lot of headphones to review on this channel, but not all of them make it onto the channel because some of them are pretty terrible and just not worth reviewing. Now, I'm not suggesting that Skullcandy make terrible headphones, nothing of the sort, but when they got in touch and said, do you want to check out the, what are they called, the Crusher ANC2, well, I was very honest with them and said, look, I'll check them out, but I can't guarantee they'll end up on my YouTube channel as a full review. I think I even said they may just appear as a YouTube short. Then, the Crusher ANC2 arrived, I turned them on, paired them to my iPhone, put them on my head, and, well, I started fiddling around with this little dial thing here, and whoa! A lot of people ask who makes this headphone stand because it appears in most of my headphone review videos. It's made by a company called Banks. They're not sponsoring this video, but I do have an affiliate partnership with them. So if you click the link in the description, I'll get a bit of a kickback, but you'll end up with a fantastic headphone stand. So thank me later. Now onto the Crusher ANC2 and some pricing and specs. Firstly, they're gonna cost $229.99 and they're an update on the original Crusher ANC. They have an updated design they have 60 hours of battery life, which is a huge jump up, and they have active noise cancelling with four mics, which has been improved. They also have Skull IQ for hands-free voice commands, personalised sound via the Skull IQ app, multi-point Bluetooth pairing, preset EQ modes, customizable physical buttons, and built-in support for tile if you happen to lose them. But the thing that really turned my head literally with these is this little thing here, this little dial, because this is linked to something called adjustable sensory base, and it is frightening. Let's just talk about the sound straight away. So you can set these up with the Skull Candy app, and within that you can set up your personalised listening profile. I did that straight away, and it does this kind of thing where you have to listen out for beeps and things, and I have no idea if it's made the sound better, but to be honest, they are pretty good sounding headphones straight out of the box. Now, hands up, I haven't really tried any of the Skull Candy headphones, so this is a new experience for me for this brand, and clearly there's a big emphasis on a big, full sound, and I quite like that. There's definitely quite a lot of the mids scooped out, and the high end is very present, it's very there, but it's not too harsh, it's quite, the whole balance for me is quite nice. However, these aren't audiophile headphones, they won't be bought by people who really love detailed music, so it's pointless talking about them in that regard. Basically, these headphones are for people who want loud, raucous, noisy, and trust me, rumbling sound. And that brings me on to this dial, which I had no idea what it was for when I first unboxed these. I thought it was for the volume. This is basically the adjustment for the sensory base, and the reason it's called the sensory base is because that little dial increases the bass frequency response, but it also injects this kind of haptic-driven rumble in the headphones themselves. It's very hard to explain unless you experience it. This is the best way that I can explain it. You turn up to a live gig, you get there, and the sound's okay, it's a little bit thin. And then someone in the mixing booth behind you realizes that they haven't switched on the subwoofers. So someone goes around the back of the stage, flicks a few switches, and bang! There they are. There's all that bottom end, and suddenly you've got that really live sounding, powerful, thump you in your chest bass. These things literally vibrate around your ears, and the bass that comes out of them is just shocking. They've clearly put quite a big driver in these cans, but it's the combination of that and these haptic vibrations. I think it makes the bass sound bigger than it is, which sounds a little bit like it could be destroying your eardrums, but it's not, because it's not uncomfortable, which leads me to believe that these aren't dangerous headphones, they're just very cleverly working on your senses. They're making you feel like you've got two great big subs attached to your ears. Now there are some issues with this, as you might guess. This won't be for everyone at all, and you do fatigue quite quickly on certain records, so dance tracks, you know, electronic stuff, hip-hop, R&B, that kind of stuff where there's a lot of bass anyway. If you turn this up too much, this little, you know, bass dial, things get very flabby and very distorted very quickly. But if you nudge it just enough, it, like I say, it gives you this kind of live sound, as though you're standing right next to the bass bins on the PA. And weirdly, 
free. It even works for things like pop, rock. I've even tried it on Adele just singing along to a piano, and it adds this kind of fullness to the sound, which obviously isn't there if you listen to that song on normal headphones. They're just a lot of fun. I genuinely laughed out loud when I first worked out what this little thing did. It was, it was actually funny. Another area where these really thrive, as you might guess, is watching movies. The amount of bass that you have control of with that little dial makes big productions on the screen just sound incredibly epic. But going back to music, it is a bit of a mixed bag with these. You have to really like your bass to get the most out of these. You have to appreciate the joy, if you can call it that, of being thumped in the chest by bass at a gig. If you like that sort of stuff, I think you're going to like these. And at times, they are genuinely scary. If you put Metallica's latest album through these, well, you need to swallow quite a few brave pills first. With all that bass going on, it's easy to forget that these are actually noise-cancelling headphones, but unfortunately, that's where everything starts to fall apart. The active noise-cancelling just isn't very good, I'm afraid, and the transparency mode, which is when the outside world is let in, isn't very good. The noise-cancelling, you can just hear way too much around you, it, and it's very hissy, there's way too much noise, and I think for $229, I expect more from noise-cancelling. However, when it comes to design and comfort, they do step things up a gear quite significantly, these are really well made headphones. The plastics do smudge quite a bit unfortunately, but they are of high quality, they feel very nice, there's loads of padding going on on the headband and also the ear cups, and they're incredibly comfortable even with all that bass rattling going on. Then we have the case which has got this nice skull candy logo on it there, but they've got it right, you know, it's the right size pretty much, it's nice and tough, and also these headphones fold correctly. So they fold like that, but they also fold like that, which means the case can be a decent size. They've even put these handy L and R things in the case, which means you know exactly how to put the headphones into the case. This stuff does matter, I don't care what you say. Skull candy, you've got it right. So who on earth are the Crusher ANC2 for? I'm struggling with the answer to this question, I'm afraid, because this is the first time I've experienced Skull Candy headphones, and it's certainly the first time I've experienced sensory bass. I think if you're a Skull Candy fan, then clearly these are designed for you, and I think you'll love them. Apart from that woeful noise cancelling, these are a fantastically built, crazy sounding pair of headphones. So if that is you, you'll love them. But for the rest of us? Well, I think if you love your bass and if you love live sounding music, they're a bit like walking into a gig venue where they've got a big beefy PA. You immediately get hit in the chest with the kick drum and the bass part that's being played. If you love that sort of thing, I think you're going to love these. However, if you're after a more traditional headphone experience, keep watching for a link to a video I made recently where I talk about the Bose QC45s, which I think might be the best headphones you can buy right now.